grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with us, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Son Jesus Christ came from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthy lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, her permission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. beginning at the ninth verse. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord.
The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, beginning at the 16th verse. From now on, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are reminded so powerfully in our readings this morning that we are indeed ambassadors for Christ and ministers of reconciliation. It reminds us as we journey through Lent that one of the main purposes of the incarnation, of God becoming flesh, becoming like one of us in the birth of Jesus Christ, was that he might bring us back into fellowship with the living God. We might be reconciled to God, no longer sojourners apart from the source of life, the source of hope, but rather brought back into fellowship through the death and resurrection of Jesus, back into fellowship with the source of all life, the living God, our Father. And the Gospel this morning re- illustrates that so powerfully. I'm sure there's very few here who haven't seen that wonderful painting by Rembrandt that Estelle chose for the front of the bulletin this morning. What more poignant image can we have than a father welcoming his estranged son back into the bosom of family, back into the fellowship of a father's love? What a wonderful image that is of God's love for each one of us, that even though we might stray from him and feel ourselves impossible to return, the father, like the father in the the prodigal son, is always ready and willing to receive us back into fellowship with him. And I've always loved the story of the prodigal son because it's layered with so many different meanings. We have the eldest son who, on one level, we can say, yes, I understand his anger and frustration with his father. You can understand that here he was, he'd stayed home, he was the dutiful son and did everything he was asked and he's angry that his brother has returned. But in a sense, he has sinned against his father just as much as the young son who fled with all his inheritance and squandered it all and arrived as living. For he did not come to his father out of love. It wasn't a relationship based on mutual respect for one another. The son did it thinking, what's in it for me? That's not the kind of love that God has for us. God loves us just simply because we are his children. And we love God because God is God, worthy of our love and affection and of our worship. The challenge of the readings this morning is asking ourselves, where in my life, where in my spiritual journey have I held grudges towards another? Where have I not allowed the, me, myself and ourselves as a parish community to be a place where reconciliation is lived? Because we are ambassadors for Christ and ministers of reconciliation. We need to seek opportunities to be in fellowship one with another. We can differ in our opinions. We can be, have different ideas about things, but we always have that sense that we are together in Christ and that our differences are our strength and our differences are a source of hope and promise because together we are stronger. And so the image of reconciliation is so important, not only within our individual lives and within the parish, but we think about our world, how much conflict there is in families, how much conflict there is in a community, how much conflict indeed there are between nations, all grounded in the reality that we will not forgive, we will not forget. Yet the gospel this morning reminds us that God does forgive. God does, in a sense, put our sins behind us. That wonderful first reading, remember Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land. Joshua was the leader of the nation. God says, I've forgotten the sins of Egypt. You are now welcome to come into the land that was promised to your ancestors. The land you fled during the great famine in the time of Joseph. You're now welcome back. God keeps his promises. He retur- they returned the land promised to Abraham. That wonderful image of God's faithfulness, of God's forgiveness, God's desire to welcome us back into fellowship with him. But one of the things to keep in mind is when we're made in the image of God, we are given agency. We make constant choices all the time. It may not be as dramatic as the story of the young son in the gospel this morning, but rather we can constantly make changes that draw choices rather that draws us away from keeping the gospel, that draws us away from the love and mercy of God, that allows us to somehow be like that young son and say, I can do better. I can live my life any way I want and it's going to just be fine until we get into a situation where we we become estranged from God, estranged sometimes from family and community, and we don't know how to find our way back. Well, the gospel reminds us that God is always willing and able and seeking us out to welcome us back. And that's an image that's important for us as a family, parish family, our own human families, 
that we always are a place where people can come back, that they're always welcomed back when they want and when they need and understand their need, and they can choose to return. And the challenge for us is, are we willing and able to welcome those who want to return, those who are beginning their faith journey once again? Will we be like the elder son? He says, well, I've been here forever and done all the work. Now you come and want to share in what we have. And there's a tendency for that to happen in any kind of organization, but even within the church. And the challenge readings this morning is no. Let us welcome all who seek Christ. Let us welcome all who seek to renew their spiritual lives. Let us rejoice and welcome all who seek to know Christ. And we pray that in this place, Christ may be, may be lived, may Christ may be found. That's what's so marvelous in our tradition of the sacraments, of the Holy Mass especially, for all are welcome who desire him to come forward to receive him, to find new life through receiving the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion, that he might strengthen us by his grace, might acknowledge by his presence with us we are forgiven and made new people, new men and women in him. We might come as we receive him in Holy Communion, despite how we might be at this moment in time, yet if we desire him, he comes. In order to inspire us, to guide us, to send us out into the world, to be ministers of reconciliation, to be ambassadors for Christ, to share the hope that is ours, the hope that draws you to Mass this morning, the joy of, and the promise of life in Christ. So as we offer this Mass together, let us offer up our, where we need to be forgiven. Perhaps we have wronged someone, and perhaps someone has wronged us and we fail to forgive. Let us offer that situation up to God and say, Lord, help me to forgive as I have been forgiven. Lord, give me the humility to ask forgiveness of those I have wronged. Lord, let me rejoice the fact that I am forgiven, a redeemed son, daughter of the living God, who welcomes us into the fellowship of the body of Christ. Now to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, be all might, majesty, dominion, power, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. one God,
Let us pray for the needs of the world, the Church, and for all whom we hold dear in our hearts and minds. Let us pray for the Lord, saying, Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are alone. Lord, in thy mercy, we pray for all who labor for peace and justice in the troubled areas of our world, especially in the nations of Ukraine, Myanmar, Belarus, Syria, Yemen, Nigeria, and for the resumption of peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians, for a renewal of the relationship between Canada and our First Nations, for this community, for our country and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. Lord, in thy mercy, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. Lord, in thy mercy, for all who are in danger or any kind of trouble, For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, Lord, in thy mercy. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of the church in Myanmar. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of the area parish of the valley, for the peace and unity of the Church of God. Lord, in thy mercy. For Shane, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, Lord, in thy mercy. For our own needs and those of others, remembering those for whom our prayers have been asked, Patricia Boyce, Jeffrey, Joshua, Roger Beeland, Vera Yotko, Mary and Rob, Ronald Bentley, Morris Redman, Phyllis James, George Stonick, Marion Green, John Gibbert, Alan, Patrick O'Toole, Elizabeth, Deb Folks, Monique Charette Clayton, Diana Favre, Larry Lawson, Chris Bellardi, Timmy Timmons, Father Todd Meeker, Francis MacDonald, John Murray, Lena Caddo, Joan and Greg Trevelyan, Joan Page, Sylvia Calder, Barbara Hicks, Marjorie Stanley, Edris, Karen, Louise and Brad, Mary, Karen Benedict, Gilles Roussel, Gilles and Annie, Lauren, Robert Buckland Sr., and all those others living with anxiety and depression and those who we name in our hearts before you this day. For those who mourn, for those struggling to overcome addiction, for those waiting the results of medical tests. We pray for all who are preparing for surgery this week. Lord, in thy mercy. And we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for for your love may known in the love of families and friends, for the beauty of creation, and for the gift of God, the Holy Spirit. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord, we pray for all those who have died in the peace of Christ, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they have a place in your eternal kingdom, remembering especially today Joseph O'Brien, Miriam Oxenford, Douglas Allen White, Bruce Much Priest, and for our members of our family and circle of friends who have gone before us. Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord. Amen. Lord, in thy mercy.
thy fault were against thee, against thy divine majesty. We do our misery thank and our heart is sorry for these our misery. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant me every hereafter serve and please thee the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with heart repentance and true faith in unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
friends, as we know, today is Mothering Sunday, and hence we wear rose-colored vestments uh, as the discipline of Lent is lessened a little bit on this day. Mothering Sunday was the original Mother's Day, and it has its roots in the scripture readings for today, which normally would have been talking about Jerusalem as the mother of us all, the theme of renewal, theme of fellowship, theme of family. And we have the custom here of blessing flowers on this day as a token of love and affection for all those in our parish community who have the care and nurture of children. And so we ask God's blessing upon these flowers and upon our homes and families. So let us pray. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, we entrust to thy loving care the members of our families, both near and far. Supply their needs, guide their footsteps, keep them in safety of body and soul, and may thy peace rest upon our homes and upon our dear ones everywhere. For Jesus Christ, our Savior's sake, amen. O Lord Jesus, who didst grow up in an earthly home in Nazareth, bless the homes of our parish, that by thy abiding presence they may be havens of peace, joy, love, and faith in the midst of this world. Amen. Bless, O Lord Jesus, these gifts of flowers, that they may be channels of thy love, imparting joy to those who give and those who receive. We pray that all children and parents, united in thee, may ever follow thy example in loving words and deeds, to thy honor and glory, now and forever. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept, O we offer you this day, in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. My dear friends, the holy sacrifice is offered to God's glory and praise and joyful thanksgiving that through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are reconciled to God and called to share in God's ministry of reconciliation in the midst of our world, in our community, in our homes. We pray that we may be strengthened by God's grace to be agents of change, of hope, and of reconciliation where we live and work. We intercede and pray for the needs of our world, uttermost praying for the situation unfolding in Ukraine, for those who have, been, who have died, for those who have had to flee their homes, for all those working to bring a lasting peace in that troubled area of the world. We pray that God's grace may change men's hearts to seek after peace and not conflict. And we remember all Ukrainians living here in Canada as they anxiously await news of family and friends stuck in, stuck in Ukraine. We pray for leadership of the world's nations to bring aid and relief to that troubled nation. Closer to home, we pray for all those who are undergoing cancer treatments this week and for all who look to this parish as their spiritual home. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, will be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. The Lord be with you. give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, 
Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of self once offer a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute and in this holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial that is precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, all thy holy church, remembering the precious death thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection, glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. 
and we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, almighty world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us.
Behold, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, the very food and drink of everlasting life. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
The Lord be with you.
a moment. Just a warm welcome to each and every one of you this morning, whether you're joining us in person, it's such a blessing to see so many out this morning, or online. And as we celebrate this, the fourth Sunday in Lent, uh, next Sunday is Passion Sunday. That marks the last two weeks. Next, we have Passion Sunday, Palm Sunday, and Holy Week. And so when you come to church on Passion Sunday, you'll notice all the various crosses that we can cover and icons are all covered. We're turning the clock back, as it were, to the time before the crucifixion of Christ. So we've entered that really the heart of Lent. And so we encourage you to begin to, if you haven't already been able to follow your Lenten disciplines, to really hunker down and really begin to reflect and prepare for the celebration of Holy Week. This week in the parish, in addition to the daily Masses on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we have a Holy Hour Adoration and Prayer before the Blessed Sacrament on Thursday from 11 to 12. And given the prayer needs in our world, uh, I think it's a very, if you can come even just for a short period of time, just to be with Christ, to be in His presence, to pray for, with Him, for the needs of our world, our parish, and our wider community. Uh, I don't have any other announcements this morning. Yes, Wendy? Thank you, Wendy, yes. Any other concerns or questions this morning? Let us join the Angelus and listen for the wonderful prelude Wesley has prepared for us. Christ our Lord. 